Welcome to Bethesda. In this Maryland suburb, a third of homes cost over a million dollars. Its high schools are ranked in the state's top 15, and its downtown is famous for its amenities. There are many suburbs like Bethesda across America. A brief history of federal housing policy, which got its start in the New Deal, is essential to understanding our current housing landscape. In 1934, the Federal Housing Administration was created to ensure home mortgages, introducing low down payment loans. In 1937, our public housing system was established. In 1938, the National Mortgage Association made low-cost loans available by purchasing and securitizing mortgages. In 1956, the federal government authorized the construction of 41,000 miles of road leading to the proliferation of suburbs. Now, it appears that federal housing policy has at least been successful in increasing home ownership, which rose from 44 to 67 percent between 1940 and 2000. There certainly is a thriving mortgage market supported by the federal government. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have done a good job of making it relatively you know, easy if you have uh, these savings, we have a decent credit score, to access a 30-year mortgage. The goal is to make housing more affordable and, in, and to increase home ownership. Uh, these, these programs have not been a success. Look at, the, uh, uh, look at Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They've made it possible for people to get loans that are far, in ex far outsized relative to their income. They've allowed people to get mortgages with very little or even no down payment. And that's a big part of the reason why you continue to see prices of housing outpace inflation. And if you look at the home ownership rates, home ownership rates now versus back in, say, the 1960s, before we had such heavy government subsidization, home ownership rates have been pretty much steady over the years. Still, while there were more than 2 million homeless in the United States in 1933, Homelessness had virtually disappeared by the 1970s, so at least the national public housing system was a success, wasn't it? The public housing debacle, just a few decades ago, you had the government, federal government subsidizing the building of these monstrosities, these public housing projects that became dilapidated, that became riddled with crime, that really oftentimes did not leave their residents in a better situation than they were in prior. In fact, with homelessness topping a million in the early 1990s, the federal government was first to declare an affordable housing crisis. Incredibly, over half of poor households pay more than 50% of their income for rent and utilities, leaving precious little for food, clothing, health care, and other necessities. And the failure of incomes to keep pace with housing costs over the past two decades has put home ownership beyond the reach of many young middle-class families. So, while federal housing policy didn't actually make housing more affordable, at least it did a great job building the American suburbs, right? The federal government did a great job of successfully and intentionally discriminating against people of color in house, particularly through redlining, um, through displacement. Uh, the federal government, in the early to middle part of this, of the 20th century, uh, established programs that were designed to help expand access to affordable housing, but did that in ways that in some cases were explicitly uh, designed to exclude African Americans or others who were considered undesirable. We see the effect of federal housing policy on people of color by comparing Bethesda to Silver Spring. In Bethesda, less than 14% of residents are Black or Hispanic, but it is more than 44% in Silver Spring. In Silver Spring, less than 2% of homes cost over a million dollars. Its high schools have an average state rank of 62, and its downtown is famous for its crime. Given that we find the same disparity between neighboring communities across America, how did this happen? But FHA limited its loans to neighborhoods that were deemed good investments, neighborhoods with white non-immigrant residents. From 1934 to 1968, FHA helped finance more than $120 billion worth of loans. 98% of that went to white borrowers. 
We put Americans to work building the interstate highway system in the end, but federal highways cut right through black and minority neighborhoods. Even though the Fair Housing Act of 1968 prohibited discrimination in the financing of housing, the loss in intergenerational wealth from historical discrimination in the federal government's stance that land use is a local issue has allowed local governments to keep affordable housing out of wealthier, white neighborhoods using zoning laws. If there is a zoning law where a family cannot move into a home unless they can afford a single family home, they are concentrated into what people may call a uh, quote unquote ghetto or the hood, which then limits them and traps them. So, while the federal government helped increase home ownership rates and reduce homelessness, it also raised the cost of housing, replaced shanty towns with vertical slums, and segregated America all with a white picket fence.